make sure to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Come on, I need you guys to get the likes up so I know I'm doing things right, okay? Also, Aquarius, a big news. I have a tarot reading with the sexy Lens Rider deck. It is one of my favorite decks. It uses watercolor. As an art historian, watercolor is my favorite mixed media to work with. Um, <clears throat> to paint with actually but um <laughs> a lot of people don't know that but this deck is wonderful in its imagery and of course right here is the beautiful queen of cups and I use this deck to do a full moon session only on patreon in my tier for the full moon reading it is 35 bucks you get two links because Truthfully, I don't know how to use iMovie on a laptop, but I know how to use it on the phone, so that's why we have two links, because the video decided to cut out. So, you got two links there for this month, for the full moon session, and then you have posted on Patreon as well, the Isis Oracle deck. We are going to be using spells, rites, rituals, and incantations uh, that come with this deck. Now, this is a deck where we go deeper and deeper into unconditional love and the levels of unconditional love for the self and for others. And the lessons that I pulled, I didn't just like pull them like cards. I do jumper on camera you'll see. So, <laughs> and what they do is these last a month and they anchor down all of your fae blessings that I've read for each week through rituals and rites and spell work through this deck solely on Patreon for each zodiac sign. And I believe it's a hundred for, yeah, it's a hundred for this. Cause I pull about three to four rituals. I go into how I explain how to do them. I explain the outcome, et cetera, et cetera. Or if you can't face it, I give you an alternative. Cause sometimes these rituals make you go within and really learn a lot about yourself. And sometimes we learn things about ourselves that are, um, kind of new and we have time we need time to develop them we need time to think about it you know so if you miss an opportunity the beauty of these cards is it can always come back to you so if you miss the opportunity to do these let's say one ritual next month it may come up in may okay and oh guys i am gonna be uh accepting emergency bookings and uh tips you can still send me but bookings uh i will be closing my calendar on may like that last Thursday in May, because I will be in a wedding and um, I am, <laughs> I'm going to be a, a part of the wedding. I have to walk my mom down the aisle for one of my siblings' weddings. And um, I will be off for two weeks because we have family coming in. Now I got to help. I'm a part of the ceremony. Now I got to go find a dress. So, because <laughs> I, uh, I was not planning on this and then the dress I found was in the Ukraine and then my poor Ukrainian dress designer is like, Oh, it's bad. It's bad. So um, if you want to support the Ukrainian dress designer, her name is Style Brides, uh, Style-ish Brides, A-C-C -C on Etsy. And um, she is super nice. Her name is, I want to say, Yana, Y-A-N-A. -A. And um, she just reopened her shop. She's selling everything 50% off. So for my bridal people... <laughs> who want to help support her. She's sending everything like directly and all of her inventory is half off basically because she's having to do everything. I think she's, she's having to sell everything that she has left right now. She was telling me it was kind of bad. So for anybody wanting to support that, there you go. So, okay, Aquarius, let's go ahead and see what your fey blessings are. Give me a second here, but oh, once I come back on June 16th, my calendar's open. And if you look at my calendar and you're disappointed because you can't get a live session with me, just know I actually do recorded video readings for people and send them to their email. So you actually will see me and we can use whatever cards you want to use. Oh my God. Yes. I love this energy. Aquarius, I've worked with this energy with a different deck for the Dragon Oracle Fae, and holy crap, even on my own, I have worked with this energy. Now, this energy, I'm still going to read from the book. Before I do, I'm going to go ahead and give you the little spiel on how I worked with her in a different deck, because the person who published uh, under, I, I want to say Lucy Cavendish is the author. She published the Dragon Fae Oracle deck and used Ayani as well in it, and so but the meaning is a little bit different because when I pulled this card, it talked about um, sexuality and it talked about 
I don't think it was just a sexuality. I think it was like divine feminine sexuality, but in the Dragon Fae Oracle, completely different meaning. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the Dragon Fae Oracle reading, and then we're going to read from the book because I have yet to actually work with this lesson from this deck. I worked with the other one, but I, I, like I said, let's go ahead and digress, uh, Aquarius. So this is the blessing of Ioni. Now Ioni is actually, it's interesting because I've done research on her too over the last couple of years. She is a uh, Irish. Sorry, I needed that water. <laughs> she is a Irish fae being and or goddess. Um, I think she's more goddess status, honestly, because she was in the pantheon of uh, the Irish uh, or Celtic pantheon of uh, deities for the Fae. Now, she is actually, her story is interesting because she was, there's many stories dealing with her, but she also is a goddess of the Fae, but mainly in Ireland. Whereas goddess Freya is all over all things fairy, but she is also a Fae queen too, to me. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Now, her thing is she was very big, in Ireland, and then the Catholic Church came. No offense to any Catholics. Um, this is just how the story goes. St. Patrick tried to expel her out. This is the quote-unquote demon he expelled out of uh, Ireland. And I'm actually part Irish, by the way. So for people who are just curious, um, this is actually part of my heritage. So it's like he, um, he went to expel a demon out. This was actually the one he tried to expel. And he didn't actually expel her. When you work with the Dragon Fate Oracle from Lucy Cavendish, you find out that through channeling and divine messages and divine guidance that Ioni is, she works with moon energy. It's so funny because she's not exactly a moon goddess, but somehow the dragons in the Fae realm kind of like swooped her up and took her to the moon uh realm where the moon fairy are and to hide her so she wouldn't be like come after anymore or persecuted and so it was kind of like oh okay like she's not hidden in the sense of gone as in disappeared she's just hidden for safety so she is also a goddess of safety now there are stories about her where she is a goddess of um people who have been harmed uh in various ways so uh, that's something else to think about too. But working with her is so much fun because it's like you feel that moon energy around you. And she, she works with the color silver. I know that in, based on that deck. But she works with silver and moon energy and keeping things hidden but also in plain sight. <laughs> and so like when I was working with that energy, I worked with it at a time when I actually did need that, where I was like able to, to keep my plans hidden, but also in plain sight. And it worked in my favor. And honestly, she also makes you feel like you're not alone, especially if you're going through trauma, which I think the whole world right now, thanks to the planetary alignments of Eris and Mars together has put all of us in bouts of trauma. And she definitely dealt with trauma. She lost her home. She lost a whole bunch of, you know, her followers who had, who had to convert to Catholicism and nobody believed in her. So the, the dragons, you know, took her on and, and let her become a part of their totem, which is, I think, amazing. But there are other stories and mythos about her, too, that as a fae goddess, I know, like, there was one that I read where she was a victim of um, trauma done, you know, sexually. And um, let's put it that way. And so what happened was she went after those people like that did that to her. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I like. I'm like, yeah, we're going to go after me. me, not propagating violence, but also me going after people who do injustice. Total Scorpio thing. It's a Scorpio thing, guys. I, I myself, <laughs> I, it's like, I don't know. I just, I don't like seeing people having injustices done to them. That like when they're innocent, you know what I mean? Like it, it, Aquarius, I don't know if it bothers you, but it bothers the crap out of me. So give, give me just a second here because I'm going to read from the book on this because I like I said, I have yet to work with this lesson. I haven't, the doorway has not opened for me yet and I want to make sure I give you everything. So let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, oh dear. Hang on. <laughs> here we go. The fairy gift of physical 
innocence. Oh my God, y'all. What did I just say? What did I just say about people going after innocent people? The blessing of knowing your body is your own, a source of gladness and enjoyment. Okay, this sounds vaguely familiar because I did read from the book, but I was like, yeah, this isn't resonating. So I took the Dragon Fae one instead. It still worked, but I want to give you guys this too. So it says the fairies are now uh, blessing you with the restoration of your innocence, that sense of being complete, completely cleared of any guilt or dissonance around your body and your right to have complete sovereignty over your physicality okay your body belongs to you fairy friend it is yours to share or to hold to yourself okay <laughs> I remember this it is your choice to take lovers to be free of all commitments or to explore it is your choice and as long as you follow the magical principle of do no harm you may do as you will okay this is why I wanted to read from the book because since she is a goddess of sensual, I would say this is sensuality and sexuality, okay? But not in the risque sense, in the sense of when she says do no harm, meaning you're not bearing ill will to your partners. So what does that look like in that arena? Okay, first off, let's go with what it doesn't look like. Stealthing, okay? That's not kind. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. That is not kind. If you're stealthing, you're an Aquarian man and you've stealthed people, no, that is unacceptable. Two, rape. Definitely, definitely high up on the list. Uh, and then three, let's say I actually, this happened to someone I knew. This is, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't have their, I don't, I'm not talking to them. How about, mm, no, not that one. Uh, how about this, hypothetical? Let's say, Okay, this is an Instagram one. There was a guy on Instagram who posted a TikTok about like what dating uh, after, during COVID has been like. He's kind of funny, but it was one about like when women ask if men have been tested for STDs, um, and the, and he looks down his pants, and the the the, <laughs> the speech on it was it was type text was. Well, I don't know if I, it's not there, you know, like if I don't see that it's there and it's like, yeah, that's doing harm to par to potential partners and, par and partners. If you are not taking care of your sexual health, not just with, you know, prostate, but also getting checked for general health and wellness of, you know, things for looking, surveying for STDs and things like that. That is a problem. If you're Aquarius female, these also apply, except you don't do stealthing. So, <laughs> um, but, hmm. I would consider those categories of doing harm to people, especially in, in intimacy. Because when you harm through intimacy, you are harming people and keeping them from trusting. And that is messed up. So that's why she's coming through. She's, it's almost like this card is interesting because it's like, I felt like she was giving a warning, but I didn't exactly understand how at the time, but now I get it because, you know, for, and the reason she said, you may choose to share your body or you may not. Basically, there is no discrimination. If you choose to share your body and take lovers, that is at your discretion. If you choose to be abstinent, she's still saying that is the choice that you make if you're happy with it and you are allowed to do that with no judgment from her or from spirit, which is awesome. Um, she just wants you to be happy with your choice, right? So again, that is your choice. She's not going to come after you for either choice. She just wants to make sure that the choice you're making is making you happy and keeping you overall happy and healthy in that aspect of health and wellness and sexuality and intimacy because this is, it's so funny. This card is blue, but yet we're talking about dynamics of sacral chakra energy and sacral chakra energy has to do with pleasure, sensuality, sexuality, how we bond with partners. You see where I'm following here? And it has to do with trust and it has to do with love and being in love as well as not only with yourself, but giving that and showing that to others in healthy ways and so it the reason I, I find it so ironic that she was not painted in 
orange, but she was painted in blue because this is throat chakra colors, blue and yellow actually, which is solar plex. So where we gain our personal empowerment, right? Um, with the solar plex chakra, but with blue, it's like, we're talking about this. It's being known. You know what I'm saying? Like there are, there are no hidden things here. There's nothing being repressed here. So now when she says the practice of do no harm, you may do as you will there in the last unicorn, there was an interesting spell that the magician Smendrick cast where he says, magic, do as you will, you know, magic, do as you will, magic, do as you will. Anyway, I love that movie. Um, <laughs> the reason he says that is because magic in of itself is a creative force that when we are using it, we are a conduit of its energy, sexual energy, sex magic is the same thing. I can't believe I'm having this talk with y'all. Anyway, um, <laughs> you dirty birds, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I'd be having this talk with Aquarius. I thought I'd be having it with Scorpio. <laughs> Or cancer. Cancer is so promiscuous. Anyway, don't tell them I said that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this. Um, the reason I'm pointing this out is because with you, Aquarius, magic do as you will as is a conduit. You're an air sign energy, so you can transverse energies very quick through the air, through communication too. So air magic. So which is Say magic. So some of it is not all of it, but the winged ones. Yes. And so this is important that you understand in order to gain trust, you must first be vulnerable. Vulnerability is not something y'all do, but yet I feel like Ayani is kind of wanting y'all to go this way. I know it's out of your comfort zone. It's only for a week and it's while the full moon is in Libra, which if we look at the last bit of your chart, five houses back from where you are. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> that is, let me think, hold on. I have to think here. Give me a second. You're, uh, I want to say eighth house of sexuality, actually, now that I think about it. Um, I might be wrong because usually I can do the chart in my head, but I am not with it today. So I'm going to say eighth house, which is Scorpio themes of love, death, sexuality, sex, intercourse. Taxation, legacy, representation. <laughs> I always say taxation with representation because that's what they taught us in school in America. Um, but, uh, you know, it kind of applied in ancient Greece, too. So <laughs> when the eighth house was created, so there you go. Um, so here's the thing the rest of the book says. So with magic, do as you will. What you do in the sexual arena, as long as you do not intentionally harm someone, that energy is going to be creative. If you do or you have, just know she knows. You're on her list. I'm going to put it that way. Uh, you are on her list. And what she does with you, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it because if she's the one that I think she is, that I remember reading about, she's going to go after people who have perpetrated terrible things in, in love and romance that have to deal with aspects of that. <laughs> and let me tell you, uh, she was pretty hard. She was a hard ass in that myth. So just FYI, you might want to like pay penance or something. Just saying. Let all choices come from a healthy place. See, that's exactly what I said. Let your sharings be nourishing and wild, freeing and glorious. Kind of what the full moon is about. If you've ever had sex on a full moon or under a full moon, it it's feels like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you're with the right person. Because let's also think about this. We're talking about sharing through intimacy. And we have to share with the right person. Now, if you're someone who's going through issues of sharing and connecting be through fear, or you're afraid that someone might leave, make sure to voice that with your partner before you give yourself over. If this has become a recurrent issue, because you know, where you get interested, people leave and then, you know, they just, you feel used because again, if you're feeling used, that's not uh, uh, the space that you want to create with someone. You want to feel like she said, 
not just healthy, because this isn't a health reading, but this is a perspective of health and sexuality is completely different because it affects our overall being. It doesn't just affect chakra and that chakra and this chakra. It affects our money, our root, our heart, our sacral, our solar plex, our throat, because we're not voicing our desires. We keep them in, we keep them repressed, we keep that throat chakra on lockdown. When we don't, we have our third eye, you know, dreams and illusions coming through when we don't have enough. If you've, if you've ever gone on a very long dry spell, you'll notice you'll have dreams about intercourse, sex, you notice, just saying. And the reason for that is, is because your body is feeling that physical need and you are not having that need met. I actually do dream interpretation too for most people who don't know that. But I don't do sex dream interpretation, so keep those to yourself, you dirty birds. But, <laughs> but I'm pointing this out so you guys understand why you may be having at this time these impulses and desires. Because impulse and desire, we can't always act on them, but they do shine a light on what it is we are missing in our lives. Even in the dream world, even in the astral plane, which is where the fae exist. Okay, they can exist. They can exist in many realms, not just that one. <laughs> Let's see. Let your intimacy grow. Let freedom remain and let none ever make you feel ashamed of your choices regarding your own beautiful body. Okay, be with whom you wish. Do as you will. But, and she says this in Irish, a ye harm none. Do not harm anybody. I'm going to repeat that again. Do not harm anybody. Let yourself know that this gift of sharing, of physical sharing, or the joy of the body is to be from this time forth without shame. If you are solo, there is no shame in being solo by yourself. FYI. Okay? Just just putting it out there because not a lot of people talk about that, but... If, if you chose to not share and you just want to be alone and you're experiencing that aspect of you being alone, that is your choice as long as you're happy with it. There you go, you know. And honestly, there are sex magic rituals for when you're solo too, by the way. Just saying, uh, for anybody wondering. Um, <laughs> she fell over. <laughs> I can't. Oh, my God. Let the fake goddess Ayani clear from you any and all residual fears around this autonomy and protect you from any forms of manipulation, including that type of manipulation that, that we sometimes, you know, lovers can say, oh, well, if you don't love me, then you won't do this for me in the bedroom. That is a form of manipulation and anybody who uses that on you does not really love you. They're just trying to get their own pleasure out of you and use you, FYI. You are blessed the whole situation without sin. See, no judgments here. You are a child of nature, of earth, and your physicality is blessed and beautiful and clean and pure flowing moonlight. See, told you, moon. So other than that, Aquarius, that's what I really have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I didn't think I'd be having talks with you guys today about this. Kind of surprised. <laughs> if you liked it, like, share, and subscribe. If you want to tip me, that would be amazing. Um, if you would like to book an emergency session with me, please do so. I actually do use a deck for like sex and intimacy, the uh, tarot of sexual magic, but not to like read on people's sexual desires. So many people have abused that on the psychic hotlines for me that I'm like, no, this is more about how to reopen your intimacy life, especially for people coming out of like long-term relationships or marriage and they're afraid of like stepping into the arena with a new partner. I actually do do readings like that. Not a lot of people know that because my Etsy shop's been shut down because I didn't have enough money to pay it. So, uh, yeah, because Etsy shop, it's eight bucks a month. But when you have no money coming in, guess what? That eight dollars you could use to food. Just saying. So other than that, Aquarius, if you want to join me for the full moon reading, it's already posted on Patreon. And if you want to join me for the rites, rituals and incantations to help Ayani's message is ground down into the 3D so you can work on cultivating unconditional love, unconditional love for the self, and into your 3D reality with lover. There you go. Other than that, I got to head off. I will see you next week. Bye, my loves.